stage three topping pattern? Are we still due for a 40% correction, potentially, uh, given what's happening uh, in the stock markets, given the bullish action we've seen over the last month? I, I believe we. I believe we're we're going to be coming into a stage four decline. I think it's just a matter of time here before it starts. But I, I think it's going to happen sometime this year. I think we're we're get every month we get a lot closer. The markets are primed for a major move. The question is which direction. Well, let's find out with Chris Vermulin. He is the chief market strategist at thetechnicaltraders.com, and he has the answers for us. Chris, welcome back to my show. Pleasure to host you today. Thanks for having me, David. Always a pleasure. We spoke exactly a month ago. March 9th was the last air date of our previous interview. I want to put the link in the description. People can check it out and check out your calls. You were calling for a market downturn, and you said that this, in the worst case scenario, the stock could repeat 2008. Actually, right after we aired that interview, the markets continued to grind lower. So your short-term call was absolutely correct. What people are wondering now is whether or not this momentum that we've seen since the middle of March is going to continue. This is an incredible move because year to day, the S&P and the NASDAQ are up. In fact, the NASDAQ has had its best quarter, uh, quarter one rather, since 2020. So what is your read on, let's start with the last month. Why have markets been grinding higher in the last month? And then we can carry it on from there. Sure. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's jump over to the charts uh, and take a look here at, uh, we've got the SP 500. So you and I ended up talking uh, somewhere right over here we saw the uh, the SP 500 have have a pretty decent pullback in price, just short term wise. It was a little bit of a bearish pattern, uh, and and we've continued to see it start to break and run higher. We had obviously um, Silicon Valley Bank come out that created a little bit of selling pressure, but then there was quickly you know bailed out their their customers were bailed out, and of course Silicon Valley was heavy weighted in technology stocks, healthcare. And um, and those are the sectors that are doing really really well. When we go and actually look at um, like the the Nasdaq, which are like the tech heavy biotech, um, we've seen the technology technology sector just muscle its way up. Let me uh, just hone in here. Uh, you can see it's performing higher. It's made a higher high. We're seeing technology in this kind of rising trend. We've got higher lows. We've got higher highs. It continues to channel up, and so. If the money's flowing into the NASDAQ, the big techs, it's going to naturally lift the entire market. The reality is a lot of stocks behind the scenes are actually in downtrends or bearish. Uh, so there's been a lot of mixed signals in this market. It's, you know, when we look at the NASDAQ moving higher uh, over the last uh, month and change, but then we go and we look at the Russell 2000, it is the complete opposite uh, as what the NASDAQ has done. We're seeing a bear flag in the small cap stocks, which typically lead the way. The NASDAQ has gone higher and is flagging up here in a bullish formation. So there is a very big disconnect. And I think it has to do with the, the I think a lot of it has to do with the bailout of the banks, the customers getting supported, which were tech and biotech and healthcare, uh, which are heavy weighted in the market. So if everybody piles in knowing the government's going to protect them, uh, then you know that's going to drive the overall market higher. Well, the small cap stocks were just left hanging to try to struggle and, and find their own traction. Um, so going back to kind of like the the look of where we are right now, if we were to actually look at say the the SP 500 using my my trend analysis strategy, uh, we're still technically in a red trend. Yes, it's been moving up. Typically, we have a, a 7 to 9% move from a high volatility stage that we're in right now. And we're about that 8% right now from the lows uh, before the market potentially can kick over. It's just there's a lot of things that need to come into play for the stock market to give me a new buy signal saying, hey, the momentum has shifted. Sellers have dissipated. They're gone. There's actually inflow into the market. And we're very close to a potential buy signal here where the markets could have this big pop and rally and and push higher uh, potentially going into may and then as we know there's the sell in may and go away so timing could be coming around perfectly for a rally and then a big pullback uh in may when that time comes so that's kind of what i'm looking at in terms of uh over the next month kind of looking forward just to summarize are you saying that this rally we've seen the last uh last uh, month or so is that part of a structural bull run or a structural bear pattern are we still in a bear market, Chris? 
Right. Yeah. Let me let me just quickly pull pull this chart up real quick. So I feel as though we are in a stage three topping phase. And we're in this kind of upward channel, which is called a complacency move. If we actually look down here, it's called a complacency move because a lot of investors are getting super bullish. They think 2022 was the bear market and it's over. And so they're in this complacency move. They're buying, they're loading up on gross stocks and uh, the market is going higher. And so if we go and we look at the long-term investing chart that I use here, uh, the top chart is the SP500, the SPY. And it's kind of my long-term trend analysis. And we are in this kind of complacency stage. We had a, a buy signal after COVID. We had a sell signal up here. We had another buy signal on the market over here. And so this market is in this complacency stage and it might continue to channel higher. So if we were to just zoom in on this chart, we could see, you know, if we were to just kind of connect these highs we could continue to see this market extend higher and, and potentially push up into the summer or for a few more weeks into May. And then for all we know, it's going to come back down to the lower end of the channel. And um, and then we just have to deal with the price action, manage positions, uh, you know, take partial profits, use our protective stops that move up in price. So I think to answer your question, I think we are uh, more or less in a uh, a bearish type of market condition, a topping phase, but technically the trend from a longer term basis is still up. So, you know, we got some bullishness, I think, for maybe another month or so, and then we could see this market roll over and sell off. So that's kind of, that's my take. Again, it, it doesn't really matter if the market starts another big bull market and runs because we'll be long because I simply follow price. But if it does and when it does roll over, if it rolls over, uh, we play the downside. So. That's the nice thing about technicals and, and people always, you know, they'll watch this video or they'll, they'll read content or other interviews I do. And they'd be like, well, you, you said you were, you know, expecting a stage four decline, a huge drop and the market's still going up. I'm like, yeah, that's what I think is going to happen, but we're not trading based off that more or less educated guess. We, I, I'm just trying to protect people, let them know what the worst case scenario is. So they're mentally prepared and ready to take action with their accounts but it doesn't matter which direction the market goes because we follow trends. We're not picking tops or bottoms. And that's the big distinction. I think a lot of readers and followers uh, get confused. I say something and they're like, well, price isn't going that way. Well, it's not about what I say. And if it goes in that direction, it's about following price and managing positions it has nothing to do with opinions. It has nothing to do with what people think is going to happen. Right. And that's the big disconnect with a lot of traders and investors. They get stuck with opinions and all these fears of missing out, or there's a huge bear market, um, but it has nothing to do with that. You just scratch it all, look at the price charts and follow the trend. So right now, the trend uh, from the weekly chart is up. We're long from the uh, lower chart here. Uh, we are still a red chart in cash, just waiting for a new opportunity to get in, which I think we're very close to potentially getting to. So short term, how are you positioned then, Chris? Short term, right now we are sitting in cash, we're, but we're we're a day or two away potentially from getting into the stock market if the underlying technicals firm up. They're very close to flashing a buy signal, and if we get that, we could see a, a pretty decent move up here in the stock market uh, over the next month going into May. Have you been in cash pretty much for the last uh, month since we spoke on the 9th of March? I uh, yeah. So when we spoke in March, we moved to cash pretty much that day we were talking about. We talked actually the day you aired the video, we actually moved to cash. Uh, the market has rebounded uh, from that level, but uh, we are really just sitting in cash waiting for the next signal. And and this is the big uh, one of the big things I should just quickly mention here is the stock market has different phases. There's times when you just make money hand over fist. Uh, there's also times where the market is a real real pain in the butt to try to make money. So when we're in a bullish phase, um, let me just stretch this uh, this lower chart uh, just down a little bit to show you kind of the comparison. When we are in a bullish phase, we have a series of great trades in the market. Lots of money can be made in terms of our short-term strategy. Uh, Long-term investors can do really well. But when you get into a topping phase or a bearish phase, which we have the signal, you can see how the market chops around and becomes difficult. So there's very short-lived trades. 
The upward trends are short-lived. They don't have follow-through. Uh, and that's the phase we're in. Right now, it's just about protecting capital and playing the opportunities as they show up and managing our positions, knowing that they could be short-lived. We might get stopped out early. Um, they're not going to be probably solid trades until the new trend kicks into high gear. For all we know, this next trend could be something with some decent legs behind it. But we're, we're definitely in this uh, choppy market phase where we just have to hold on let the market work itself out and wait for the new major bull market or the major bear market. Uh, we need a big trend here to get back into a, kind of a thriving market condition. All right. So let's talk about this trend. What are the requirements for this trend to, I guess, manifest itself before you make a decision on whether or not it's a major bear or bull? I, mean, I, I think the question that, well, first of all, if that, that, that I have um, listening to you is if you're waiting for a trend, Chris, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're waiting for a trend, aren't you already missing out on gains, either if you're long or short? Yeah, but the reality of the market is you can't catch every move. And if you're trying to catch every single move, that means you're trying to pick the bottom to, to get out of a short position and to get long something new. Um, you, you can't just because there's a move doesn't mean you can actually safely catch it from a risk and position management. And that's what people don't fully understand. They think if there's a huge move in the market, especially a really, really quick one, they think it should have been caught, it should have been traded, and you should have made money. The reality is if you're managing risk in positions, if there's a really quick, sharp reversal move and rally, and you know the technicals, the underlyings don't confirm, uh, you're really just picking a bottom and thinking, ah, this looks like a bottom. And that typically trying to pick bottoms and tops is a really tough game in the long run. The problem is if you do it and everybody's done it, if you catch one, you make a lot of money and it becomes addicting. And you then you want to constantly try picking the next top or bottom because, man, when you nail a top or bottom, you can make ridiculous money in a few weeks or a few months. Uh, but the reality is you can't just you can't just catch a trend up because it's trended up. It's you need I need technicals to confirm before I'm going to put my money at stake. If, if I don't have the technicals, it really is just a guess. I'm like, yeah, a lot of these tops and bottoms, I can see things evolving. I'm like, this looks like a top coming up. This looks like a bottom. Most of the time I, I am right, but it goes against, you know, you only have to be wrong one or two of those and they can wipe out a ton of, of profits. Uh, so, because they, they usually go really hard against you. So I, I steer clear of that kind of mindset and trying to pick those tops and bottoms when it comes to this style of trading, something that's on the weekly chart or the daily chart. It's different when I focus on momentum trading, we can catch uh, intraday highs and lows uh, with some some pretty interesting indicators um, uh, that I use. So it's, it's pretty powerful, but when it comes to investing real money, large amounts of money, I don't flirt with, you know, mess around with tops and bottoms and trying to catch every, every trend. I, uh, I wanna talk about your levels and your uh, outlook. Um... Oh, I want to come back to that. But since we're on the topic of strategy, I think it's important uh, for me to ask you about some strategies Strategies I've seen on social media. A lot of the people watching this show, especially the younger audience, might be on Instagram and TikTok and whatnot. And there's a lot of these um, self-professed gurus out there who are posting these trading videos, and perhaps they have valid strategies. Let's, let, let's find out. One of them is that uh, I've heard you should probably, I think this is a trend reversal strategy, if a stock or a security is trading, let's say, I think it was 90 days, he talked about 90 days above a certain standard deviation, it's time to place a short trade. Or if 90 days below a certain standard deviation, it's time to place a long trade. Almost every time this person has said, um, when that happens, it trend reverses. Is that something you've observed? Is that true? Uh, everybody's got, here. here's the thing. Everybody's brain uh, perceives things differently and picks up on different nuances. I've got some unique skills. My brain just picks up with very specific nuances where subscribers of my newsletter, I share my morning videos like every morning, these tiny little nuances of overbought, oversold, price gaps, what the what the sentiment is of how everybody's going to be panicking today. I have all these little things kind of really that I've honed in on and I share it and I teach it and I provide the indicators to, to my subscribers and, and I'm really good at the momentum short-term trading charts that last, you know, a day to two or three days. And then I'm really good at 
managing kind of position trades or swing trades, like the ones I was showing you, where we're just trying to catch the waves in the in overall is stock index. When the index isn't favorable, we look to bonds or the US dollar uh, ETFs, either the long or inverse. Um, so this person here has got a 90 day strategy above or below a specific um, standard deviation, which is a Bollinger band outer outer line, pretty much. Um, it, it could be it could totally work. I've never gone 90 days out past a standard de certain deviation. That's a long way out. Typically, it must not be a very high standard deviation. It must be like a 0.5 or 0.6. Um, usually, I'd look for shorter term. Um, uh, high, de high deviation, two, two and a half times deviation, but I'm only looking for it to pop up through it, you know, on the 30 minute chart. And then usually it'll recoil back into the zone very quickly um, because it's something outside a standard deviation, especially one or two times is short lived. They're very, very rare. So for something to be out of a deviation for 90 days, they have very little of a deviation. Um, it, there could be a viable strategy there. Everybody has their own way, I guess, is my point. Uh, so I can't just say it doesn't work. Uh, it very much so could work. It's just uh, that's not my style. That's not something I've kind of gone down the path of to figure out. Let's go back to the uh, chart you were referencing earlier about um, the trend line. I believe you had drawn a uh, upper band and a lower band. And my question is, uh, what is the level that uh, this momentum, this upward momentum would have to ch to reach before you see a trend reversal. I, we're not trying to pick bottoms or tops here, but perhaps once this uh, once the stock markets breach this level for a sustained amount of time, you might expect a trend reversal. So what, what would that level be? Uh, you mean in terms of deviation? So I, I remember uh, just a couple of minutes ago, you drew these two parallel uh, blue lines. Um, from, yeah, there we go. So what, what if you extend that blue line forward, um, you were drawing an extension. Um, do you, do we know what level that extension is? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's uh, on the SPY. It's about four hundred and thirty dollars. Okay. Uh, current current price is at uh, four ten, four eleven right now. So so there's there's there, I mean it's not a huge move. It's the overall index, but uh, that is a, a push up in the SPY, which means the Nasdaq would probably move quite a bit more on a percentage basis. Uh, but it's it's still potentially a pretty decent move, especially we can take a, a percentage here and see where it is in terms of the upside. It's about a four, four and a half or five percent rally. Um, but if if the market you know continues to move up there, that's a, a pretty decent move uh, for, for example, your entire portfolio. Like, I don't I don't break my portfolio up into all kinds of little chunks. I don't trade, you know, a whole bunch of different uh, individual stocks. With my core investing strategy, when the stock market gives us a buy signal, I move all my money into the stock market because it is technically the best asset to be in. So I'll move it all into the index, which I'm comfortable with the stock market volatility. It's not like an ARK ETF that can move 15% a day. Stock index on a bad day, you know, is 2%, 3% on a crazy day. It could be more, but those are very rare. So a 4% gain in an entire portfolio in a few weeks is a very strong move versus, you know, having to trade a whole bunch of different individual stocks and making 20% gain on each, you know, smaller position that averages out. Um, so I try to, you know, my style is like, how can I do the fewest trades um, and get a solid overall portfolio return without having to put on a ton of trades and move into different uh, sectors and, and stocks and things like that? In terms of the direction you mentioned earlier in this interview that you expect short-term momentum to be bullish for now, am I, am I correct in summarizing that? Uh, I'm just wondering what the technical indicators you looked at uh, are for you to make that conclusion. Yeah, I mean, I, I use a lot of my own proprietary indicators and tools. So I use a lot of different ratios. I use a lot of different comparisons. Um, I, I, I like to use cycles. So it's not something I, I fully share, but... I mean, I want I want price to be above the 50-day moving average. I want it to be sloping up. I, I want uh, you know higher highs on the chart. Um, I want to see you know potentially the stock market needs to be outperforming utilities. Um, you know, there's different there's all kinds of different assets that if you compare it to that are defensive plays um, and, and different currencies. If you compare them all together, is money flowing into the stock market compared to these other assets, or is everybody flowing into different 
assets um, as a defensive play. So not only do I want price technicals to firm up, but I need to see that global money is actually funneling towards stocks, not just kind of right now, over the last month, they've really just been random. It's been in all kinds of different sectors and different commodities. Uh, everything is haywire all over the place. The only thing that's been really strong has been, you know, the gold miners. And um, they're acting as a defensive play right now, which actually, if I show you uh, the best asset now list, on the bottom of this chart are these these green and red bars. And so when when the bars are red, that means my stock market chart is red. It's not favorable to be long stocks. You don't want to be in the stock market. And if you notice here, the last time we had a sell signal in the stock market, gold miners actually rallied. And then we we uh, when when the stock market became favorable and we got into stocks, the stock uh, the gold miners sold off. And now we the stock market has not been favorable for. I mean, it has been moving up, but the technicals have not been confirming, but we're seeing gold miners perform again. So this is telling us our investors are keep moving into gold miners as a defensive play when they don't want to be holding technology or anything else like that. Uh, so it's it's pretty interesting how this market has got this big disconnect in, in gold miners right now and, and is generally not a good sign for the stock market. I've found if you go back in time, when gold miners are the top performing and they do it they do it for several months usually we've gone into a full on stage 4 kind of de decline we saw saw the big tech bubble we saw the the 2008 financial crisis so i'm not a huge while it's exciting to see gold miners moving up it's actually a big red flag that everybody's piling into gold miners which is a leverage play on gold because everybody wants physical assets like gold because they're worried about the dollar collapsing, they're worried about banks, they're, they're moving to cash. Um, so all these things come together, right? And so all these things come into my analysis to help formulate, is the market a buy signal or a sell signal? Uh, so, I mean, that's a little convoluted story just because I don't share my, my full on strategy of how I, how I come up with it. But uh, there's a lot of relationships in the market that um, uh, need to come together in order to generate a buy signal or a sell signal. Uh, you were talking about the gold sector. I think that leads to my next question, which is sector outlook. Is there any one particular sector that you think is going to outperform at this current juncture? Well, gold miners have definitely uh, had had a huge run to the upside. They're they're down pretty good, three four percent today. Um, usually, we start to see healthcare and we see uh, utilities do well. Uh, so we've got utilities. The XLU is the ETF for that sector. Uh, it's had a really nice pop. It's been flagging sideways here. It, it looks like it might want to start to to push higher here. And same with uh, healthcare. We've seen healthcare, uh, just let it load here. Healthcare's had a really nice run and is pushing higher. Percentage-wise, they've, they've moved up this hot list on the left-hand side. The best sectors or the strongest sectors are at the top, and they get weaker near the bottom. Uh, and, and really, over the last couple of weeks, we've seen gold and silver miners, healthcare, uh, even consumer staples and utilities, other than today, they were all up at the top. And those are all the late stage um, sectors in the market. For example, if we just look down at the stock market sector here, stock market is this blue line. And typically energy, precious metals, healthcare, utilities are all the ones that become the defensive plays just before the stock market kind of goes over that roller coaster ride. Now that that might not happen, but it might be only a few weeks away. May, for all we know, could be um, the market top. Uh, and, and so we just have to follow the markets and see what uh, what they're doing. But I like the precious metal space. They're, they're starting, I mean, they've had a huge run. They're starting to show volatility. When we look at the um, the price of a price action here of uh, QL or uh, GLD, we definitely have some volatility starting to pick up. We've got a really strong pop a quick pullback, another huge pop, now a really sharp pullback. That's usually kind of what happens when things start to get exhausted. Um, and, and everybody's talking about it. Everybody's piling in. So this sector may be running out of steam. And if this sector starts to run out of steam and starts to head lower, well, that probably means the stock market could actually go on a buy signal. And that means people are dumping the defensive plays, gold miners, utilities, and they're going to pile into technology, pile into other stocks, and the stock market is going to take off 
well miners kind of fall out of sync. So that's what I'm kind of seeing here, um, potentially with miners stalling out, gold potentially topping out. I mean, gold is threatening to break out uh, to all time highs. Gold miners are still 45% off the highs. So they're just lagging. They're they're not supporting this, this move up in gold, uh, which makes me think that, you know, this is um, the precious metal space is about to take a bit of a breather. I think the bottom line, I think people are wondering uh, whether or not you are still holding on to the view, which is that the stock markets in this phase, I, I believe that it was a phase three or phase four topping pattern in the chart that you showed. Are we still due for a 40% correction? Uh, like you had, yeah, st stage three topping pattern. Are we still due for a 40% correction, potentially, uh, given what's happening uh, in the stock markets, given the bullish action we've seen over the last month? I, I believe, we, I believe we're, we're going to be coming into a stage four decline. I think it's just a matter of time here before it starts, but I, I think it's going to happen sometime this year. I think we're, we're get every month we get a lot closer in terms of how long these usually take to unfold and all that stuff. So I think we're heading there. And, and that's why I keep trying to warn everybody is just be prepared. If you are like a buy and hold investor, you hold, you know, stocks and bonds. I mean, this could be so devastating because, uh, you know, the majority of capital from the, in the markets is held by people who are 50 plus years of age, which means they're retired or close to retired. And if the market was to correct and potentially take years to recover, uh, two, three, four, five years to recover. I mean, it puts a lot of damage, a lot, you know, to anyone withdrawing money from their retirement account. You you really risk, you run the risk of having um, a sequence of returns risk, which if you don't know what that is, look it up. Um, it, it really is, is you're withdrawing money when it's drawn down and it's low. And when the market rebounds, you just don't get the recovery you need. And you actually can run out of money very easily in retirement. So I'm just trying to protect the majority of people, the majority of the capital saying, just be aware this is coming uh, potentially. And if you don't have a game, uh, a plan, a game plan for this, uh, it is going to, it is going to put a huge uh, dent into your retirement lifestyle that you want uh, going forward. And I, in a way I'd like it to happen because I mean, a financial reset is, is, is great for those prepared for it. It means we can get better real estate prices, you can buy businesses, you can buy equipment, you know, everything goes on sales when everybody's laid off, they're running out of money, they don't have jobs, um, they burn through their savings. That's an opportunity for people sitting on cash, people who, who, who didn't ride this down and watch their money evaporate. Instead, they kept their money or become wealthier as everything falls apart. So, um, you know, there are some other sides of this camp. I've read I uh, recently have sent, been sent a few good articles that we're just about to start a huge another bull market in equities. And I mean, that would, that would be awesome too. I mean, it, it would be great. Um, I, I like a reset. It will apply a lot of pressure uh, on the economy, on people, but it's an opportunity. Uh, but if we get a big racket, rally here, uh, you know, we're going to be on board and riding this up for, for everything it's worth, which is, which is the nice thing about being a technical trader, that's all I am. I don't take fundamentals. I don't take economic data. I don't follow anyone else's opinions. I'll occasionally get sent some stuff to read from subscribers or followers. But the nice thing about a technical trader is it doesn't matter what the markets do. You don't have to worry about the news. You don't have to stress about, are we going into recession? Uh, you know, Is this going to happen? Is this going to fall or whatever? You just follow price. You move in when it's good. You move out when it's not. And when it's not, you find another asset to move into. Uh, it's it's fairly straightforward if you don't get caught up in the whole financial industry uh, buy and hold and you know opinions. Finally, you have a book that's coming out. Well, I think you wrote another version already, but I think you have a second version. I had a chance to skim through a few pages. Excellent book. It's about technical analysis, obviously. <laughs> um, but I think you go into some more specific details on your strategy than a 25 minute interview can reveal. So I definitely recommend people check that out when it's coming out. So do you have any idea? Give us, give us a teaser here. What is your book about? When is it coming out? What can we expect? Sure. So I've, I'm coming out with the second edition of my book called technical trading mastery, seven steps to win with logic. Uh, the first book was, was pretty high level. Uh, the first version, this second version is, is, uh, almost a complete rewrite. Here it is, you know, this 10 years later, 
I've, I've provided all the juicy details that everybody wanted, wanted to get from it, including some of my strategies, all my settings, uh, a momentum strategy, which I kind of touched on with you here today, where you can catch these tops and bottoms. Uh, it also gives you the foundation to build like a swing trading or investing strategy. So I actually provide like the meat and potatoes for, for people to not only learn how the markets move, why they move, but how to pick up on all these nuances that I see in the markets. These are the nuances that my brain has picked out over the years and says, you know, these are like, to me, these are like the, the, the key tools um, for, for trading short, short term and in investing. So the, everything's in there. There's some stories in there of, of, you know, my experiences and um, uh, yeah, you're going to learn all about the stage analysis, how the markets move, it really is the ultimate, to me, it's the ultimate foundation. If you need to figure out what type of trader you are, the type of risk and assets you should be focusing on, a lot of people I think are actually trading, well, I know a lot of people are trading the wrong, uh, more or less investment vehicles. A lot of people are trading stocks and or options or just buying options and not selling options or they're trading futures. And I mean, I talk to people on the phone all the time and they tell me what they're trading and, and their skill set and their stress level and where they are in life. I, I can't give advice because I'm not an advisor, but in my head, I'm just like, oh my gosh, you were like, you know, you should look into trading like ETFs because that's what I focus on. And ETFs are great because you can trade almost anything. You can jack the leverage up. You can not use leverage and um, you can move large amounts of money with it, right? So the book covers all this stuff and it really puts you from, you know, ground zero to um, right into the book and uh, into being able to become a successful trader with a, a good understanding, proper expectations of the markets. Like, as you said earlier, um, you know, sitting in cash and the markets rallied over the last month, are, aren't we missing out? Well, yeah, if you think you can get those and you want to be aggressive for those, uh, but that's not the proper expectation to think you can catch every move. And, and knowing how the markets move and how you need to manage it really is like 90% of the battle. It's an, um, trading is an emotional game. And then you apply a little bit of technicals and logic um, to, to support that. And it, it can work really well. All right. We'll definitely have you back on and um, when, when your book launches and we'll talk a little bit yeah, more. That should in be in May. About... Yeah, exactly. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll do that uh, when, when the book launches in May. And um, I want to, maybe not today because we're out of time, but maybe next time we can delve a little bit deeper into what you just said and perhaps the benefits of trading versus just a buy and hold strategy, which I know a lot of people employ. Not everybody is a trader. Not everybody wants to be a trader, but at least understand the pros and cons of trading versus a standard buy and hold strategy. So mm -hmm. I think that's important to understand as well. Thank you very mm -hmm. much, Chris, for your time today. Excellent analysis as always. And I look forward to following up with you in about a month. Sounds great, David. Thank you and uh, take care. Bye-bye. All right, thank you. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.